What's up guys, this is the Board Game Roamer, and I'm here with an awesome, awesome game. Uh, this is called Rise to Nobility, published by Final Frontier Games. Uh, this is actually the second game uh, that I have from this company. Uh, the first game was Cavern Tavern, and it's a really awesome, awesome game. Um, I'm going to open do the unboxing for this. Uh, hopefully, what I want to do is I actually want to do a solo playthrough of Cavern Tavern first, and then do this because both of these games are set in the uh, Five Realms uh, universe that they have created. So uh, one of the locations on the board actually is the Cavern Tavern in this, but uh, this was a, a Kickstarter that I backed and it just came in. This is the deluxe edition, so this does have the wooden, uh, some wooden components, some upgraded components. So um, let's dive in and take a look and see what this baby has to offer. Super, super excited about this. Cavern Tavern was an amazing game. So uh, I'm really excited to see the kind of the continuation of this. Uh, this is kind of a Euro game. It's a worker placement. You're, you're essentially um, trying to rise to power uh, through various means. You've got guilds that generate uh, items that you can sell and trade and uh, people that will settle in your city. Um, that's what these player boards are that it shows and uh, so there's there's multiple paths to victory but uh, like I said, I'm just really really excited because uh, I really really loved oh man R really loved Cavern Tavern so really looking forward to this one let's get the old shrink off of here really thick uh, box Got some spot UV on it, um, which is nice. You get it to, yeah, yeah, you can kind of tell a little bit the name. Um, cool. So let's open this baby up and see what we got. The art is by the Miko. Excellent, excellent art. Ooh, okay. So we've got a black bag, and I'm not 100% sure what that's for, but we got it. Uh, all right, then we got uh, several tiles. There's the back side of the tiles, front side of the tiles. Now, the cool thing about this board when we get it out is it actually is two sided, it has a night and day side. So, um, settlements maybe this is guild tiles, favor tokens, something like that. Maybe well, we'll have to see once we uh, once we uh, Get this baby out, give it a go. We got all kinds of little tokens, money tokens. Ah, oh, I have to go over there and get it. Uh, these are the money tokens you got. I actually, um, favor tiles. There's, yeah, there's several things there. Um, actually, let me just get it. Hold on just one second. Here we go. So <clears throat> these, let's go back here for just a second. These are the money. I wish I had something to compare it to. But um, they actually have coins. That are real coins, and I mean, look, guys, these are super thick, and they really are really, really nice. And it's got that kind of art, a little bit different art there. I know that didn't focus well, but I'll at least give you an idea. Comes in fives and ones. I don't think. I could be wrong, but I don't think this is available or will be available in retail um, necessarily. Now, if you go to like Game Stewards or something like that, then you might be able to get it. But <clears throat> if you just order it normally, you would probably not be able to get this. So let me set these over here to the side. Man, that's just so awesome. I love. You know, it's funny, when I first started out, I always thought, eh, who cares if it's got these coins? Who cares if it's got the wooden 
but the more I play, the more stuff I get. I've got to be honest, I'm finding myself really, really liking these upgrading components. And the cool thing, too, is what I have found is that, you know, you have a lot of games that use money or something like that. And so, realistically, something like this may actually work in a multitude of games. Uh, this art might work for any kind of fantasy-based game. And so now you've got coins that you can replace in another game and have some really, really nice, heavy coins in your hand. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what these tiles are. Uh, I know these are boats, so you can trade uh, certain items on these boats, and they're all worth different values. So that's what these are, and I'm not really sure what the dice piece is for, but we'll find out. Lots of boats. Lots of boats. All right, cool. So this is part of uh, what was upgraded during the Kickstarter, and this is like a component tray so really basically they expect all these boats and coins and all that stuff to go in here um, in this tray and that just sits actually on the very top so the idea is you could pull this out and put your stuff in it uh, it's not super thick super hard plastic but it is good enough um, if you're gonna play it is it is pretty decent this up here. Here's the prayer boards. So the cool thing is you have a day side, then you have a night side, and I don't believe. Let me look right quick. So we got gold plus one plus one plus one there. I think both sides are the same. It's just one is darker than the other. Yeah. Everything else is the same on it. They just wanted to do something different on the opposite side. So each player will get one of these boards. And this is where you track buildings you build, um, your settlers come in, you got some reputation basically that you can spend. All right, and then we've got, let's see here. Then we have, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I think this is the point tracker, maybe. Overall, I'm thinking. I'm not 100% sure, actually. It's been a while since I looked at this, so I don't remember all the details of the rules. And then we have the board itself. So let's take a look, see the board itself. Let's set this over here to the side. So the first thing is right here, Cavern Tavern. That is the other game that they first produced. Again, in the Five Realms universe. Yeah, all right. Let's open it. Okay, it opens like that. So it's actually going to sit kind of long ways like this. Of course, there's not going to be enough room for me to put everything out here, is there? But uh, you got. Uh, you got these guild spots, Carpenter's Guild, Scholar's Guild, etc., etc., uh, where you can place guild masters and you can get some points and reputation and, and all that sort of stuff. And also, one of the cool things, one of the cool things about this too is, um, well, you can see how there's dice. So, like, you place a die there, and that basically gets you kind of like gets you the action, right? But Here's the more important part about that. Some of these locations, like here at the cavern, you get this less than or equal to, less than or equal to. Well, once you place a dial on that track, that determines what numbers can be placed over here. So that is a way to actually lock people out, possibly, because you you see what they've rolled. That is a way to lock people out of some of these locations. In the construction yard and the cavern tavern are pretty pretty good pretty crucial locations actually um, and then you've got down here in the corner let's see if I can move some of this out of the way I didn't realize how big this board was so let me just put this back in here
Should have got two of these things of coins, but I didn't. Now that I see them. <laughs> uh, let's move this over here. Yeah. Can't quite get everything in the shot, but um, this is the other side. So again, you have kind of that same track going on over construction and all these guilds. Um, just some places you go, like the castle, whatnot, guild hall to get some money. But you have these towels down here, and um, there's different people that you're kind of like trying to impress so you can take a reputation hit, but get uh, these tiles that they give you special stuff. So it's really, really, really fun. This is a one to six player game, so there is a solo variant. So, like I said, I'll probably do a, a, a solo run through of uh, Cavern Tavern, and then we'll pull this out and. Um, do a solo playthrough of this after that. So that's the board, and on the back side, is it where I got it out? On the back side is, uh, I believe this is the same. Yeah, yeah. On the back side is the it's the same board, but again, the art style is different. Now you've got a nighttime uh, feel. So if you like the the other side it's got a lot more of the um you know the lighter or you can and all the tokens also just why they had the kind of like had the two sides there you got the light side and then you got the dark side so you can play on this side and you can see color scheme wise it matches that color scheme and then the other side matches the daylight side so um i can't remember i'm not going to say that there's a there's a difference as far as rules or whatnot go at night but um it still looks really neat so you kind of got two different looks which i i appreciate that uh it's not a big deal and it is just art and generally while the art is important to a degree to me it's not something that makes or breaks the game uh but that i do appreciate that they're at least trying to use everything <laughs> that they've got there all right so now let's go back to the box and again this box is really thick which i really really love uh, okay, rule book. So, rules of conduct. All right, and it is 21, 20, 22, 23 pages. Lots of pictures, lots of examples. Um, I haven't read through it, but I have had the look at the PDF a while back, so. Uh, I thought they did a pretty decent job of um, explaining everything, showing you how it goes, uh, what you can do, where and how, uh, good examples. Um, and then on the back side is a little bit of a quick reference page, how many coins, uh, um, how many players, all, you know, all the stuff that you have to do. Because as the players decrease, some of these slots are basically cut off and filled in. Uh, or at least pre-filled in with something and you can't really change it. Um, so that's that. The rule book, so that's good. Um, okay, so uh, here's a little artwork for the Cavern Tavern, which is funny. That's pretty neat. I like that. Um, okay, so this, the Chancery, so the Chancery is, I think that's what this is, if I remember right. Um, the Chancery is, was unlocked during the Kickstarter and is kind of like a mini expansion. I believe that it only came in the Deluxe Edition, but I could be wrong. Um, maybe not. Anywho, that's what this is. And uh, I think you can go get something. Yeah. Anyway, it's another board that sits to the side that you can go get stuff from. So that's the Chancery. Again, I don't I don't know that he has the rules. So, um, all right. So, Box Edition has these dice. Let me check these out. Um, basically, at the beginning of your turn, you're rolling these dice. Everybody has their own color. You can see um, the number there. Um, let me look through these. I will say that these dice do look, I like them better. 
than the Cavern Tavern dice. Um, well, they do have kind of the, you know, the stuff on the corners that kind of gives it that that look of um, detail, or uh, not detail, that look of ornateness, fantasy-based look. The numbers are much more legible, um, which I do appreciate because there's a couple dice with all the scroll work that was on these in Cavern Tavern that were very, very hard to read. Um, so, yeah, definitely an improvement. Um, and then we have, God, we have bags and bags and bags and bags of markers. Uh, some of these are resources. Actually, I think all these are resources. Looks like books, gold, wands, furniture, jewelry, and weapons, maybe? Something like that. And then you've got some player markers. First player marker. Um, maybe some round trackers, etc., etc. Yep. Boats. I think that's the first player marker right there. Oops. Can't really see that. Okay. You know, all that. And here's a, a bag full of all the different resources. And then this is these are maples. So this is kind of like your population. And then you have houses in there as well. Pretty cool. Those are wood. Color coded of course. Color coded of course. All right, and then we've got baggies because everybody needs a good set of baggies. And we have a couple of decks of cards here. So let's see what we got. Oh, so um, let's take a look at the cards. This insert is supposed to hold all this. Well, maybe, I don't know that it's necessarily designed for the money, but it is supposed to hold all the rest of this cards wise and bits and pieces wise. Pull this off here. All right, let's see what we got here. So we've got, I mean, at the end of the round, players see one quarter. So I guess these are kind of like, um, let's see here. Let's say two, one, one, oh. Uh, not really sure what these are. Players receive port traders. The more, the merrier. He's back. So he has a one and a two. So I'm assuming there's like maybe the first half and the game, second half of the game, some sort of like event or something like that, maybe. But this says, for instance, players receive plus one coin for each good they sell at the port. I'm just going to take up to two settler cards when they place a die in the cavern. Cavern tavern. At the end of the round, players receive one coin for each of their unplayed dice. So, kind of giving you some random uh, events that happened. That's cool. Um, let's see here. So, here's some cards for one to two players, three players. Four players, five players, six players, and tells you how much gold you get. Oh, so these little guys, the meeples here, are apprentices for the guilds. That's right. That's how you. That's one way to draw income is to have apprentices in the guilds. Apparently, cool. Let's see here. Then we've got six. How to calculate victory points, the, the round order. You roll the dice, you take turns, you collect income, and then you reset. Which well, sounds very simple, but there's quite a lot more to it than that. Don't let that fool you. All right, and then what do we got here? Oh, these look like uh, objective cards, maybe? Or two secret objective cards? Let's look at the backs. 
I think the back's a little bit different. Yeah. So here's some. We need a new. Yeah, these are like objective cards that you're trying to get. Maybe this is for the solo. One guild master in each guild and 112 points. Yeah, I bet that's what that is because um, that is that is one of the things that's in the Cavern Tavern as well. Is when you play solo, you got a stack of cards and you're pulling from that, trying to get so many different types of patrons that you served and a minimum number of points that you served or um, types of foods that you served. So I think that's what that is. It's objectives. And it's, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen objective cards. So get a decent amount of replayability there. And then you got these cards um, that kind of look like the same thing, to be honest with you. But they're just straight points. Two VP for each workshop you built in the Carpenters, Merchants, and Scholars. So these look like bonus victory points. So I guess you you would pull one of those to see what your objective is, and then maybe these are used in the normal two plus player game to give you bonuses. Cool. So that's the first stack of cards. Let's see what the second stack of cards is. Oh yes, the settlers. So you have these settlers come in. And that's how you build your buildings. That's how you, um, I believe that's how you put, you build your buildings and you kind of build a, um, a little village and then those people help generate um, different things that are going to allow you to put um, these people into uh, the guilds and whatnot. And depending on the card, I think this tells you um, maybe what they can produce or something like that or what guilds they can go in maybe not 100% sure uh, oh wait we got some different looking things here so this is a different card back and this again has got the 2 and 1 so I'm assuming this is like the first half of the game or Maybe depending on the track where you place, because I didn't see these same symbols where we, we showed the dice and you had the less than, less than or equal to all the way across. This symbol was underneath, not one was underneath half of them and two was underneath the other half. So maybe that's what that is. You really have two decks to do that with. And this says, so these must be favors. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what these are. That's what it looks like. So these look like favors you call into the stone council. Take two coins and two goods. Take five coins from the supply. Gain four on the reputation track. Yeah, that's what that is. Cool. Neat O. All right, there you have it. The rise to nobility. Lots of stuff going on in this game so uh, I'm going to actually on the Kickstarter page uh, they showed how to put all this stuff back into this tray because this tray does have you know it is removable so you can put your stuff in it so I'm gonna go look at it take a quick look see get all this stuff organized punched out and uh, come back and show you what it looks like once everything's punched out and back in the box so stay tuned and I'll see you ladies and gentlemen in just a minute guys here is the rise and nobility box i have file oh man i almost dang it i just realized i didn't put something in there that's all right let me fix that easy so um here's the box and i've got almost everything in it i left this board out but i can add that right quick uh this is a ridiculously full box um honestly Probably what I'm going to do when I show you this is see if I can move anything around because <laughs> this top is absolutely slam packed full. Uh, as a matter of fact, on the center, um, you can definitely tell it kind of sits up 
and I'm not really sure how to fix that, but all of the cardboard tokens, right, anything that's cardboard uh, goes up here uh, in this tray. This is that, that tray that I showed you, so that tray can just come and pull out, set out to the side. Then you have your rule book. Then you have your boards, which would include this board, which I failed to put in there just a second ago. So you have all those. This is the scoreboard. Your main board. And then underneath here, this is the tray that pulls out. So each of these are the goods uh, that can be created by the buildings in the game. You're going to use these to get to sell for money. You're going to use those to uh, just do a lot of different things with. Um, in the center, I have uh, bagged up each player color in their own individual uh, colors there. And then this is the money, and underneath this, let me pull these out, is the dice. Uh, this is primarily designed for the dice, but um, I added the money to it. Hopefully that'll work. The only thing that I'm not 100% sure on is... Well, these dice, as heavy as they are sitting on top of these dice faces, if they got moved around a lot. But I don't stack my stuff sideways, and I'm generally pretty careful when I move it around. I don't uh, do a lot of damage to it, I don't think. So I think we're okay. Um, but yeah, that's that's everything in there. And like I said, I'll probably change some stuff up. Like I think I think there's room for me to put like maybe like something small right there. Something small right there because this is stuff that I know we're going to have to have. <clears throat> These are all the building tiles. So each each one of the building locations in the um, on the map have these six, one of a handful of six tiles or uh, six tiles that give you different benefits. So um, that's what all those do. I might not be able to, yeah, I'll see if I can fit down in there, I think. Just trying to make a little bit more room on the top of this tray. Because um, this, oh man, this baby, I'm telling you, is absolutely slam packed full of stuff. Absolutely slam packed full. Like one there, maybe, 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 just barely, maybe. Yeah, I'll sit down there like that. Let's see here. I'm trying to move some stuff around here to the side. See if I can get it even just a little bit better. Maybe that's a little bit better. I don't know about how much, but maybe that's a little bit better. But there is just a lot of stuff in here. So then this will go back here. Just to show you this kind of in reverse. Um, then we've got the player boards. Got the main board, the scoreboard, the player boards. Although I probably, yeah, I'm gonna do it like this. Well, shoot, there it goes. Player boards, rule book, and finally, tray on top. And lid on top, pretty nice, snug fit there. But yeah, definitely. Definitely full. So there you go, Rise of Nobility. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you get a chance to play this game, definitely do it. Like I said, I will uh, get to this on the channel. I'll do a playthrough, solo playthrough of Cavern Tavern so you can see it. And then play this. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.